Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. So today we have some exciting work to do with some pretty exciting new technology. So as part of our long-term plans and the work we need to do with the council and things like that, one of the most important things is for us to be able to fully understand the site and particularly its layout. Now it's really important that we have this information because when we want to do things like architectural designs, when we want to do the contaminated land work to understand how we're going to sort of re-landscape the site, it's really difficult to do that if you don't have an accurate picture of what the site looks like before you start. Now in the past this has been a really difficult and complex process which has relied on people walking around with GPS sensors, taking measurements at every point, and it can take a very long time when you're talking about a site of 120, 130 acres like we've got here. Fortunately in the modern sci-fi world that we currently live in, there are new technology which is making this a lot easier. And even more fortunately, we've been incredibly lucky Lucky to be approached by an amazing company called Team UAV who have actually offered to support the redevelopment of the park. This company specializes in drone survey work and they have some pretty incredible technology that can literally fly a drone over the site and 3D map the entire site in a level of detail that we've never seen before. So we're down here on a partially wet, partially sunny day. Hopefully we can hang on to the sunny part of the day in order to do this work. So before the rain comes in, again let's head up the hill and let's crack on So we've come up to the bottom fire road where we're going to actually be conducting the survey from uh, and I'm here with Adam, the operations manager from Team UAV. So Adam, this is actually the second time you've been out to the site. Uh, do you want to just talk through what, what was the first visit about and, and sort of how all this works? Yeah, of course. So the, the first visit, um, we, we came to capture the, the terrain. With this being such a, a steep-sided piece of terrain that we capture, and it's really important that the, the drone on today's survey maintains a set distance above the ground, okay. plus for safety purposes. Um, so we came out initially and we've modelled the ground mm -hmm. and that gives us a low resolution map of the area which we can put into the drone and that will then allow the drone to almost follow that, that contour as it goes up the hill. So I assume that's automatic, you don't actually have to manually fly it, it actually does it fly itself? Yeah exactly, yeah. so we, we put in the, the area of, that we, we're surveying, um, we put in the digital train model from the previous visit oh, Okay. and there's some parameters that we set into it but once that's set the drone will then fly autonomously and that's important so that it's getting that correct flight paths that are the correct distance from each other on the return passes um, which it'd be very difficult for a human to do. So that all kind of makes sense, so you came out the first time and got a sort of rough map of the site shall we say and then you sort of go away you program that into a sort of a flight path for the drone uh, you've got the the control points that we saw you putting out earlier which kind of allow I guess the drone to understand where it is in relation to the site and, and use that to in, refine its accuracy but when it's actually sort of flying back and forth what's it actually kind of doing while it's up there yeah so there's there's two captures that we're doing today the one that's happening at the moment is called photogrammetry Mm -hmm. So it will be captured on this site, uh, about two and a half thousand images. And once we've got that, that data, each of these images are, are geotagged with, with ArcDK accuracy data. Mm -hmm. And it will stitch the images together and it gives the pixels coordinates of latitude, longitude and, and height. And from that then it creates a, a 3D model, very similar to Google Earth 3D. Mm -hmm. um, but far greater resolution yeah. and, and greater accuracy. So that's the photogrammetry. After this flight, we'll put a, a LiDAR unit on it, and that essentially fires lasers out onto to the ground and surfaces. And the, the beauty of the LiDAR is it penetrates the vegetation. Yeah. So with the photogrammetry, if we've got a tree with, with vegetation on, 
we may not see below that, that canopy. With the LiDAR, we'll now see those grain points below the vegetation. Yeah, the idea that it can actually see through the trees to see the terrain underneath it is, yeah, is, is mind-blowing technology. It, it is, and, and the fact of, at a click of a button, every tree on the site disappears, mm. and you just see the, the, the terrain for what the terrain is. So it's been about a week or so since they've been on site doing the survey work and I've come over to the Team UAV offices to have a look at what they've come up with. So let's head inside and see Lewis. Hi Lewis, good to see you mate. Hi buddy, how's things? Yeah, good, let's go and see what you've got. Right then Lewis, so out of the cold woods and into your nice comfy office, I gather the data is ready to look at. So I'm pretty excited having seen some of the previews. So should we dive into it? Let's start with having a look at the, the whole area survey that we completed. Yeah, sounds good. So what we've got is a map, um, very much like a Google Earth map, and we, then we, we uh, zoom down into the actual survey data that we captured. Um, and if we click this little button with the uh, photos, we can see all of the uh, locations where every single photo was taken. Wow. You can see that it carried, that, um, well, it carried out a kind of grid flight plan. Yeah. So when we really look down at the detail, and we'll just pick an area maybe on the car park, mm. Um, this is the kind of level of detail that we're that we're picking up, and you can see that we're looking at stones. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. You can literally see each individual stone and plant and everything. Um, we can add other elevation features as well, so we can look at the terrain data. In this case, blue is low and red is high, so you can see as it goes up the mountain, um, you start to get those those higher elevations there as well. So if we were to pick the corner of this. Uh, pad here, we could we could say that that is within one centimeter of its actual position in the real world. It's pretty. I think. I mean, in itself, that's incredible. But being able to do that over such a large area, in I mean, you guys did what a couple of sort of two-hour sort of surveys to achieve this level of data. Yeah, exactly that. So a traditional survey might take you weeks or months. Yeah, I mean, we you know we've. Before you guys reached out to us, you know, say we were looking for topographical surveys for the site. It's an important, necessary component of any sort of planning application and any development plan. Yeah. And you know, when you're starting to look at trying to map in detail a site that's 100 plus acres, you know, trying to do that manually, which has always been the way up to now, is is takes weeks, if not months, and you know, costs thousands, if not tens of thousands of pounds. And the fact that the technology exists to do this within a couple of hours of survey work is to this level of detail is incredible so if we go into the 3d mode mm. so we were looking at a 2d mode there yeah. we can go into the in, into looking at the site in 3d so we'll start down at the uh, this is i think where things go really crazy for me like this is you know the top down you know i remember the first time i ever looked at google earth and being blown away by that and this is obviously the 2d version this is a whole level above that and but the 3d is just this is just mind-blowing from the previews you sent me yeah so you know we can see we've got the car park area and the trails around the car park and we can look at those in some detail as well and um, we can go over to the quarry so you don't have to walk over the site you don't have to you know um, send people up to different places to get measurements and even volume calculations and I'll show you you know a quick way of doing that now um, so if we want to measure the width of the track for instance then we've got the tools right on here to do that and so I'm just clicking exactly what you want to measure and you can go down in and, and measure as much detail as you want the closer you get the more detail you get and the more accurate you are and then obviously it tells us our, our lengths and measurements over here on the right hand side you see, that, that's one of those functions which is not something that would jump out to you as something you'd require maybe when you're running mm. a bike park, 
but this is kind of the, the difference between what people perceive running a bike park is versus the reality. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've had to use the sort of measure tool on Google Earth, which is obviously yeah. nowhere near accurate. But even in a fairly inaccurate sense, it's really important. You know, classic thing we often get is, you know, we'll have to quote for work. Let's say we're doing a project, someone wants us to build a track or some features or something like that, or even for our own internal building. Mm. And even simple stuff like, you know, how much earth do I need to move? You know, because that directly relates to how much it costs, you know, how much machine time you've got, how much diesel you're going to burn. And there's, it's very difficult to estimate that, you know, and, and this, being able to actually measure things at this level of detail so that I can say, well, we're going to build this track that's this wide, it's this long, we're going to be digging down this depth, that's that much material, all of that then builds into a, an accurate cost model. If we want to work out how much material we've got in one place, we can simply draw around that, that material pile, that stockpile, um, and we can view that in 3D as well. <laughs> and again, all of our cut, fill, and volume data is over here on the right hand side. So not only do you get a, a 3D represent, visual representation of the material of the stockpile, um, you also get that data as well. I just think this this would, is such a valuable tool for us, and I mean a valuable tool for anyone doing a development or you know, particularly bike parks to just have this macro level view of your entire site, you know, and being able to go from the looking at the whole site to looking at a single rock on the ground and understanding its position and its height and its volume. You know, it's, it, it's sci-fi stuff. No other way to say it. Yeah, and that's what we do. You know, we, we make those, or we take that complex survey data and turn it into a really intuitive visualization that is, that is easy to understand and, and work with. A lot of bike parks have got trees mm. in the way, forests, it might be in a forest location or a really uh, heavily wooded area. So we also use LiDAR. And the LiDAR sensors allow us to penetrate the canopy beneath the trees and pick up the ground profile as well. Yeah, I mean, we obviously we, we've got no trees now, mm. so it's kind of been helpful for that. You know, I know you've mentioned the ability to kind of look through the trees, and I've got to be honest, I don't fully understand how that works, but I'd be keen, because we have got some areas obviously that still have trees, so I'd be interested to see what that kind of looks like. So we can separate ground profile um, to anything above ground as well. And in this case, we've identified the trees as everything above ground, and, the, uh, and they're in white, and then the ground profile is actually in brown. So it, it can actually de detect the difference between the trees and the ground? Exactly. It automatically classifies uh, ground and non-ground. I don't even want to get into the detail of how that's possible. So we can also take a cross-section of, um, of the land as well. Okay. Um, so and it's quite a simple process. Again, it's a couple of clicks. Uh, we identify the cross section that we want to take, a left click and a right click, and and there we go. I mean, it's, a, I mean, it's almost like a, like it's like an MRI sc uh, <laughs> slice yeah. through the through the uh, the bike part, and the fact that it it can pick out you know the individual branches and and leaves, like I mean, it just like I say, the the, the, the I, you know you live and breathe this, so you know. It, but for someone like me seeing this for the first time, it it. It's, it's kind of mind-blowing to think that the technology has come this far that it can, you know, not only look through the trees, but it's capturing that detail as it looks through the trees. So I know you guys came back and did a more detailed scan of some of our iconic tracks yeah, like 50 did, Envision. Yeah. So how did that turn out? Fantastic. Yeah? And, and, and it's, it's an incredible amount of detail. Mm. So from what we... Uh, what you've seen previously on the 3D models. Yeah. This is going down to a below one centimeter per right. pixel resolution. Okay. Um, and, and if we take a look at maybe some of the, one of the most iconic lines in the UK probably, 50 to one. Mm -hmm. um, and let's, you know, we can look at that in 3D. Wow. And we can get closer. I mean, it it looks like a live feed from a yeah, drone, like you're, like you're controlling it right now and we're looking at it. The fact that this is a, a 3D model is my... I mean, we always said we wanted to preserve a 50 to 1 for posterity. I think you've, uh, you've gone one step forward and we've digitally got preserved it. In, yeah, it. Yeah, we've got it digitised. Yeah. And, and that's exactly um, what, what we can do here. So we can capture that, um, that real-world asset or that real-world feature mm. and digitise it 
but not just digitize it, we can accurately digitize it yeah, yeah. to granular detail. I mean, there's a thousand hours of 3D modeling work there up before this to get a non-accurate version of it. And I mean, and I'm right in thinking that, you know, you could in theory turn this into sort of a, a 3D video or even like a, a sort of virtual reality kind of experience where people could actually just stand next to those jumps. You know, someone in Australia who's thinking about coming could put on a VR headset or hold up their phone and actually be stood next to that jump and see the scale. And But I've got to say, Lewis, this just, just is amazing. And I just want to, again, thank you so much for, you know, for all the work you've done for us and, and, and also for taking the time today to show me it and take me through it. You know, it's, yeah, I can't tell you how I appreciate you are. So yeah, thanks a lot, mate. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. It's been great working with you. Cheers. So I've got to say, that was amazing. You know, seeing the park digitally built in that way, uh, my mind is absolutely racing about all the ways that we can use this information to improve the redevelopment of the park. So I want to say a huge thank you to Lewis and the guys at Team UAV for working with us and helping to support the redevelopment of the park. It really does mean a lot to us that people like this are getting behind it. If you're interested in the work that Team UAV does, and they've done some amazing projects around the world, uh, their links will be in the description, so check out their website and their social media, uh, particularly if you're looking for this kind of work for yourself. But for now, I'm going to head back over to the park and carry on with the redevelopment work. If you're interested in following on with our stories, always make sure to like and subscribe. And most of all, guys, I hope I'll see you in the next video.